first film up for review today is Becky. I don't know if you've seen this has come out just recently. It's out on digital download now. Um, this stars uh, Kevin James, a.k.a. Paul Blart Mall Cop, um, and many other Zookeeper and other films. Um, yes, anyway, grown up, <coughs> grown ups, grown up too. Nobody mentions those. Um, so Kevin James, so people are like, okay, so we know what Kevin James is all about. Becky, um, if you haven't heard of this, you're thinking, oh, he's probably some inept dad who has to, you know, look after his daughter called Becky. No, that's not the case. Um, Kevin James, a.k.a. Paul Blartmore Cop, um, usually usually looks like this. Um, but, but here he looks like um, this. In fact, let's give him an about turn. There we go. In fact, yes, that's a lovely little schwastika on the back of his head. There we go. So he's shaved, he's got a beard, he's got a schwastika on the head. The chances are he's not Paul Blartmore Cop in this movie. The chances are he's the baddie, and that's exactly what he is. So he's playing completely against type. Um, they've been doing it a lot recently, haven't they? That A good example was actually Vince Vaughan in um, Brawl in Cell Block 99, or 99. Um, excellent film, really over the top, really crazy. Um, again, a, a, an actor usually known for comedic films, comedic roles, um, and, and maybe some dramas suddenly being in uh, uh, playing a, a prisoner and um, dealing out lashings of, of, of violence. So that's what you get in this, by the way. This is Kevin James being very, very violent, or things violent happening around him, certainly. So the story is very, very simple. The story is that um, she, young girl Becky, in question of the title, is 11 years old, played by Lulu Wilson, and she's excellent. I have to say, in a film that's disappointing, she is actually excellent. I'll give it that. Um, but the, the good points first, I suppose. The good points first. Um, the, the, oh yes, the plot, sorry. The plot is that basically she, um, she is very, very back of a napkin stuff. It, she has an argument with her dad just as a time when a home invasion happens. Classic move. Um, and, um, and she has to defend her house and her family from home invaders. Um, so... Yes, the good things. Smart editing, I would say. It's very smartly edited. There's some cool bits where people are on the phone and, uh, and kind of the camera shifts from one perspective to the other, from one side of the other to the screen, and, and the other person's there, but in their environment. It, it, it's clever. Um, and not just that, just the way it was shot, the cinematography, that sort of thing. Well, well done. Um, except for um, when people get killed, and I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. Um, Kevin James then, um, he plays the, the, the ringleader of, of a group of prisoners who escape at the beginning of the film and are trying to get hold of this key. And um, my films don't have any spoilers, so I'm not going to tell you anything about the key. But I'm watching it tell you, it's like they've wrote half a movie, okay? Somebody's written half a movie here. Because the key thing just doesn't come to any fruition. I'm not going to spoil anything for you, and I'm not going to further any on that point, but it doesn't come to any fruition. Any, yeah, it's very strange. When you have something like that in the film, you have the, 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 McGuffin, the, the MacGuffin, sorry, the thing that you're trying to, um, that everyone's trying to get, the one thing, the, the, the Ark of the Covenant, whatever it is. And anyway, the, the, the story around the key is very oddly written it's like some people came in to write that bit and then left you know went out for a tea break or something i don't know came back and they were like oh we finished the film now and they're like well, okay and they're like don't you want to finish that key thing no no it's all right anyway um at the start becky is unfairly rude as well and stroppy and arrogant because you know her, her mum's died and now she's got to face the prospect of a very nice dad played by um uh, Joe McHale, by the way, um, a very nice dad has, has, you know, it's like a year later or whatever, he's moved on, he's met another woman who's very nice, got a kid, and completely respects Becky, that's the thing, you know, she's not a nasty, wicked stepmother, um, and, and they, 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 know, they want to tell her that, she, that they're going to get married, and Becky's having none of it, and I have to say, you're meant to warm to Becky, meant to invest in Becky, she's the, you know, she's the main protagonist here, and I didn't, so, you know, because she was such an unnecessarily stroppy little what's it? Don't be so rude and harsh on your dad when he. And it wasn't like 
I thought, oh, we're, we're going to find out Dad's responsible for Mum's death. He's not. You know, there's nothing like that. You know, it's strange that she's so unnecessarily rude. Anyway, moving on from that, it makes for an uneven character, and it's unnecessary. Um, I mean, I should have known that there was something wrong when eight production companies um, flashed their name cards at the beginning of this film. When when you get that many, you know you know something's up. You know, yeah, somewhere in the long too many cooks spoil the broth and all of that. And and n no, it, it it clearly shows. Um, there's the violence is kind of a prime example of why this film doesn't work because when you get around to the violence and obviously there's violence she she, she offs these people is you know generally offs a few of these people that he's with uh, and when they do it's it's so overly done and when I say overly done I mean so so there's a scene when when you know she's killing someone I won't tell you how in case you watch it but let's say she's on top of them with a device let's say a device and she's killing them with this device. And the guys underneath, you know, go, ah, I'm dying, right? But we cut to her and him about, it must be about six or seven or eight times each. And, it, and it's not to, it prolongs it so much past the point where it's reality. And whilst that worked in films like self, um, Brawl in Cell Block 99, because it was, almost a homage to things and a throwback to those exploita exploitation movies and, and that, this doesn't work, it, it doesn't, it, none of the rest of the film is any is that at all, so to just have extended, basically extended death scenes, yeah, the guy has a thing pushed into his neck, right, and it just, it keeps cutting to his reaction, the thing in the neck, her, pushing it in, you know, his face, the thing in the neck, her, it, over and over and over, so it takes so long for him to die, and I get that they're trying to prolong the agony and all the rest of it, and, but it just it just doesn't work. It just doesn't work. So um, yeah, um, a couple of summary points, and um, the ending is half written. The whole movie is half written. Um, the whole thing about the key is um, a shame because you invest in something and it just fizzles out. Um, Kevin James was. Okay, but wasted really. He doesn't really do uh, as much as I was hoping he'd do. And it's a sort of film. It's a sort of film where characters do do stupid things. Um, lazy, lazy hiring by the writers as well. They hired Joe McHale and got him to play Jeff. It's as if when they went, well, he plays Jeff. You know, in, in his TV show, uh, just just call him Jeff. Yeah, um, and it, the lazy writing is shown throughout. Um, there's some really awful lines. Um, yeah, um, if you're in for, if you want to watch, you know, real hardcore violent stuff, there is, it's in here, and it's interesting, because at the beginning, there's a few, it's not that violent, it's a bit off, cut, cut away, and off, off camera sort of stuff, and you kind of think, oh, okay, it's going to be one of those films, and then suddenly, there's, you know, eyeballs coming out, and people chopping them off and stuff, and it's, yeah, it's pretty nasty, so, yeah. That is the film Becky, and we are giving that film two stars, begrudgingly. I thought it was going to be good, guys. I thought it was going to be good. It's not. Um, I wouldn't watch it. Right, our second film today reviewed is the film Artemis Fowl. It's brand new. It's come to Disney+. Plus. Because, of course, there's no cinemas to release it in. Uh, big budget. Uh, the new... You know, big budget kids film with wizards and fairies and all the rest of it. Um, I mean, just look at the poster. You can see they're trying to go for that sort of Harry Potter look. And all the rest of them that came out, that sort of, you know, mortal influence and uh, and, uh, and Sorcerer's Apprentice and all these sort of things that come out and all look the same. Um, it's directed by Kenneth Branagh, British man, um, who I grew up watching him in, you know, Shakespearean roles as an actor and he has since turned his hand to directing he's funny because he's taken on he, he seems to get given big budget movies that you wouldn't have thought a, a Shakespearean actor would, 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 would get to make things like he did um, Jack Ryan Shadow Recruit um, randomly and um, 
And he also did Thor, which I suppose is quite Shakespearean. But anyway, here we are. Um, he's been given the reins of a you know, $125 million budget movie, uh, in this case called Artemis Fowl, uh, uh, again based on a, a, a celebrated you know, uh, book, I think a series of books, um, but certainly a book. Um, Artemis Fowl. So what is it about? Well, first of all, it's very, very short. It's an hour and a half, and it's gone. It's done. And you're very surprised, you know. Uh, honestly, that um, ninety-six minute running time, I think, with credits as well. It, it's in and out, uh, and it feels like it. I have to say, they do the whole, you know, setting up for a sequel at the end, and and really, what they're actually doing is actually only giving you half a movie, um, half a story. A bit like when we discussed in the previous review, uh, the film Becky. How they give you know, they don't finish the plot. It's kind of the same here, but at least the plot they've given you, unlike Becky in this film, Artemis Fowl, the, the plot is actually well, there is one and it's more coherent. <laughs> um, but they, they, yeah, they, they kind of it kind of feels like they it's they could have been another half an hour. And the funny thing is that most big budget kids' films that come out now, you kind of think, okay, that was a bit long, you could have snipped 20 minutes off the end. This one actually could have done with a little longer, I think, you know, um, but then again, they're trying to set up for the sequel. Um, it's very well directed by Kenneth Branagh, you can see, it's, it's um, you know, the, the camera work is, is at times quite, quite something to watch. Even just the, I mean, there's a shot where he pulls the camera back underneath, um, or it's actually towards the screen, underneath the uh, helicopter, and it, you sort of think, so it's, it's the sort of thing that Michael Bay would have made look like a music video, but Kenneth Branagh makes it look like something out of a Terence Malick movie. Um, so, you know, I enjoyed I enjoyed how it looked. Um, I have to say, substantially, it's very threadbare. There's not a lot going on there. Um, it it looks nice. It's a story about uh, he has to find his Artemis Fowl. He's this little kid. Big heads, and he's very, he's actually very annoying. I don't know what it is about these films this week that they've just been featuring annoying, you know, twelve-year-olds or eleven-year-olds. Um, he's twelve in this, and Becky was eleven. Uh, yes, he's annoying because he's so clever. You know, so at the beginning of the movie, someone even says to him, oh, "You know, you don't respect anyone, and you don't hold anyone in your same esteem." And he says, "Yes, I do." Albert Einstein. You know, okay. Um, that's the sort of kid he is. Um, so he's not entirely likable, really. Um, more likable is his butler, um, who doesn't get to do a lot other than fight a few things. Um, there's some story involving fairies coming into the world and how they've hidden themselves from the world for ages, and really they've been hiding inside the earth, um, which made me think of the core movie. I love the core. Um, watched it recently. Maybe think of that really as in they're probably down there. Shame the core people didn't bump into them on the way, it would have been fun. Um, anyway, um, that's a digression. Uh, yes, so it's very short, which you know means you can't complain too much, especially if you get made to watch it, sort of thing, because you've got kids who want to watch it. Um, it looks smart, you know, there's people complaining the CGI is rubbish. I don't think it was, I thought it was great, to be honest. You know, there's a really cool thing involving time freezing. And I'm a sucker for anything involving time travel, time freeze, time lapse, time and everything. And, and I like what they did with that. They, they, you could get stuck in a bit of a bubble of it and stuff. It's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, underneath it all, not very good. Three out of five we're going to give that because, you know, it wasn't awful. It wasn't terrible. But it certainly wasn't as good as I was hoping it to be. Or any, I've, I've come at the end of that and kind of gone, well, okay, um, right. You know, instead of being like, wow, that was great, that was great, I really enjoyed that. Um, mm, but it wasn't terrible, I didn't, you know, feel myself, you know, nodding off. Going. Three out of five for Artemis Fowl, now available on Disney+. Plus.